important, dear friends. Wonderful day the Lord has given us. And let us make this day uh, a great time of walking with the Lord, enjoying His presence, and uh, enjoying His favor in our lives. And so let us begin this day by meditating God's word given to us today. I would like to talk to you about salvation and sainthood. You receive salvation by believing in your heart that Jesus is Lord and he was raised from the dead by God the Father and then you confess this truth with your mouth according to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. And that's how you are saved. Now your heart and your mouth are to be engaged uh, for you to be saved. The heart is uh, to be engaged in believing and mouth is to be engaged in making that proclamation, that confession. What the heart believe, the mouth must proclaim, according to God's word in Romans. Heart is an internal faculty and mouth is an external faculty. So both your internal and external faculties of heart and mouth must be employed and engaged in uh, your salvation. Salvation is a free gift from heaven. We don't work for it and we don't pay for it. We don't earn it. We simply, after making that, that, that confession with our mouth and of believing with our heart, we receive it by faith. And uh, we accept it by faith. A gift given is to be received. Once you receive the gift, you own it. What is yours, you enjoy and you cherish. And my friends, this salvation you receive, though you don't pay for it, you don't earn it, you are not even worthy for it. You don't even deserve it. And yet, a very loving uh, God, seeing your plight in your life, not able to resist any sin or resist temptation, and thus going on your way to hell. He had compassion on you. And uh, the reason it is freely given to you is it doesn't mean it is cheap. It is so costly, precious, and expensive that Jesus himself paid the price with his blood and with his life. So if you try to buy salvation, you will never get it. And thank God for a loving God who graciously offered it to us free. And uh, once you have this salvation within you, you must live in it and remain saved, which is your responsibility. This salvation leads you to your eternal life. Your eternity with Jesus depends on, 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 on your remaining in your salvation and growing in your salvation. And you know, you have to keep on working it out. As Paul said it this way, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now you don't work for your salvation. That is made very clear. But the salvation that God has worked within you, now your responsibility is to work out that salvation to show to the world 
that you are no longer the same person. You are a changed person. Salvation is a very powerful uh, gift. It has in it the power to transform you and to keep changing you so that day by day there is a marked difference in your life, practical life. According to uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 29, God's purpose is that you keep on changed and you, you are transformed uh, to be like his son Jesus Christ. That's what God the Father wants. He wants you to be like his son Jesus. Isn't that wonderful, my friends? Salvation is a one-time event. And you are saved the moment you confess Jesus as Lord and Savior and uh, you surrender yourself uh, to the Lordship of Jesus. That instant, your new life begins. And you are assured of eternal life. But then you'll have to keep on changing by sanctification. And that's what makes you a saint. While you receive salvation in a, in, in, in a moment, when you open your heart with that true confession, that happens. It is an event that happens suddenly. But uh, to be a saint is a lifelong process. And that process is called sanctification. The sanctification is a lifelong process as the Holy Spirit keeps on working in you and keep on changing you through that work. And this therefore needs pruning. You know, according to John's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 1 to 8, you read. You know, you, you, you read about pruning. That he, he prunes you and he grafts you into a real vine. So that, that the purpose of pruning is for you to become more and more and more and much more fruitful. And uh, thus the fruit of the Holy Spirit will keep on increasing in you. And that's what makes you a different person altogether. And uh, uh, pruning is a removal of all the unwanted growth in our character. And uh, it is uh, removing all the unwanted elements in our nature, unnecessary outgrowth in our in our character which uh, negatively affect our standing before God and also before people around us that is the purpose of it and unless this process happens of sanctifying that's how we are sanctified and it happens every day and we must therefore yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit who is working in us and removing these unwanted and unclean things, making us, uh, making us a very, uh, very poor in this world as, as a follower of Christ. No, he doesn't want us to be poor. He wants us to be rich. And that's how we need to show the fruit uh, in us. As, it's, as it is said, bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. And in all this, we have a part to do. Never forget, we are saved to be holy. Don't forget. Many people say, I am saved, now I have a heaven, I am on my way to heaven. No, my friends, that is not the purpose. That salvation is the initial stage. And when... Uh, you are ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the rapture and when you look face to face with Jesus, you must be like him. That is God's plan and purpose for you. And I keep reminding my people often the need to be changed into his likeness. 
And may the Lord bless you as you yield yourself to the work of the Holy Spirit. The salvation that God through his Holy Spirit worked in you. Now you bring it out by your life. The Lord bless you as you walk with the Lord daily. Time is very short, my, my friends. So let us be changed. Jesus is coming soon. He wants to see us like himself. May the Holy Spirit help you. And as I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you as you give yourself to him. Amen. This is a wonderful day. Have a good day.